Hi, and welcome to our module on printing and directory services in Red Hat Enterprise. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the question and comment box. And let's get started looking at uh, directory services and printing. Uh, today we'll talk about the uh, network information system, uh, directory services uh, platform, LDAP, again another way in which we can uh, have good directory services management, and CUPS. Uh, which is a service uh, set for printing. First, let's look at CUPS. Uh, CUPS stands for the Common Unix Printing System. Uh, you may have already been familiar with CUPS from other environments. Uh, I know prior to my experience in Linux using it, I used it in Mac environments as well as with HPUX, and it's implemented similarly across all Linux and Unix distributions. Uh, within CUPS, we can have three different printer types. And these support either local or networking printing. Uh, if you even think about how you set up uh, local and networking printing, you've probably done it in one of three ways. You've had a local printer directly attached to your machine. You've had a standalone network printer that directly attached to the network. Or you had a printer that was connected to a print server. And that is how you implemented network printing. The same three concepts are implemented in CUPS. First, we can have a local printer, a remote printer, which means that it's attached to another host that's network accessible. So that's like that printer that's attached to the print server. And lastly, network printer, one that is again directly attached to the network. So those three familiar types of printers are available and configurable inside CUPS, and we can use all three. Uh, now, to start CUPS, we have this typical system service management, just like we have with every other Red Hat service. We issue the service command, and we specify the CUPS service, and issue a start or a stop if we want to either start or stop uh, printing services. To configure the printer, though, uh, we can have a nice graphic interface that is launched by using the system config printer command line. That will launch a utility that will allow us to specify uh, those things that we talked about, what, whether it's a local, uh, remote, or standalone printer. Uh, additionally, if it's a network printer, enter the IP, select the model so that the right driver is located, and so on. Uh, so you're seeing more and more in the second part of our class that there are times when we're going to use the GUI tools to do advanced configurations of things like printing and things like uh, our Samba configuration and X configuration. We'll use the same type of configuration for system config printer to configure our printers for cups. Another way to manage cups is to use this interface, a graphic interface provided by a light web server uh, to uh, administer cups. This is part of the cup system and we can configure printers via the browser. You notice the up here in the uh, location bar, I'm going to an IP of six or an an IP port of 631. So the address is the local host address of the server, or I could do it remotely. If I can contact another server from the network, I could put in, say, 192.168.11 for a particular server, or I could put in test server one, or Kirk, or Spock, whatever the domain name that's resolvable, and then go ahead and enter the IP port. And that will specifically bring up this web application that's used to configure the printer via the browser. Uh, additionally, notice that I can uh, manage printers real time with uh, jobs that are attached to whatever particular printers. And then administration of printers, adding printer classes, adding printers, managing those printers and classes, managing the print server, all can be done from this line of links here. Additionally, I get a little bit of information about CUPS and how it was created and initially maintained by Apple for use with Linux-based operating systems. Again, it tells us that it's uh, available on Mac OS 10 and most Linux distributions. So that's how we might encounter it and that's how we can use it uh, here with Red Hat Enterprise. For a moment, let's talk about directory services. Uh, directory services are used to maintain a common repository of user information and host names and that type of information. The reason why we would use directory services is to put all that information in a unified location and to have common management of it. Uh, for instance, we've seen examples of user accounts 
and we know that we manage user accounts locally on one server in SD password. Uh, but it's nice to be able to manage user access and user uh, system permission from a centralized location. If we have 10, 20, 100, even more Unix or Linux servers in our environment, then we don't want to have to manage individual password and group and shadow files across all those different servers. Instead, we would like to have one location where we manage those, that user information and manage information about particular hosts or computers in the environment. Now, two services available in Red Hat Enterprise are NIS, or Network Information Services, and LDAP, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Let's first take a look at NIS. Now, there's a historical reason why most of the time when we configure a network information service, almost all the commands or the files to configure it and work with it are prefixed with YP. That's because as the service was initially configured or created some time ago, it used to be called Yellow Pages. So all the commands will begin with YP for Yellow Pages. Uh, Network Information Services maintains various roles for the directory servers in the environment. You can have a master server which will maintain all the master information for users in the environment. Then there's the concept of slave server. The slave server is an exact replica of the master server. It doesn't actually write any data, it doesn't make any changes, it just simply copies all data from the master and the purpose is for load balancing. So that if we have a very large enterprise class environment, we're not trying to serve everything from one location. One location becomes the master copy, but then it can re rep be replicated to two, three, four, however many necessary we have necessary slave servers uh, in the environment for replication and load balancing of the same network information service information. Then lastly, we have the client. The client may be another server in the environment that has data. It could be a file server, a web server, or some other type of server that needs to have authentication information, uh, but it does not behave as a master or a slave. It simply reads from a slave or from the master and does not retain any data locally. So when it's time to authenticate a particular user or access control, then it's going to read from a slave or a master to do so. Uh, to configure a client, for to use network information services uh, we will want to use the system config authentication script. This script is also going to be common to use with LDAP but basically we're configuring here uh, what our system will start up with and uh, how it will authenticate local users. Now during first boot we also have the option to configure this. So when we first install a system we don't have to do all of our user management locally. We can immediately connect to a directory services provider such as NIS and a master or slave server in the environment and configure our client or our server uh, to grab configuration information or authentication information from that directory server. Uh, to test a client we can use the YP which command. It'll show us which uh, NIS servers are currently being used by our server and also YP itch, YP which minus M which will show all maps available. So uh, what are the current schemes used uh, for directory services by the NIST server? Let's now take a look at LDAP. Uh, in LDAP we have similar roles except we have a fourth here. Uh, it's similar to LDAP in which we have a master server. Uh, the master is called server. Uh, so the server, there's only one LDAP server technically in the environment that maintains the master copies of all uh, directory access information. Then we have a replica. It's similar to the slave in uh, NIS. It's used for load balancing. Uh, so it has a read-only uh, type relationship to the server. It replicates consistently with the server. Then we have a client. That's like the consumer that we talked about before. The server at the end that then just uh, uses the information specified uh, by the main servers. And then of course we have a referral. Now the referral is kind of a man in the middle. It will forward requests to a replica or server nearby uh, to get information for a client. So if you have a remote client that can't directly communicate with the server or replica, the client can request uh, information from a referral 
The referral will then talk to the replica and provide the information back to the client. LDAP again can be configured using the system config authentication script. Issue that command on the command line and we'll be able to uh, do LDAP configuration uh, using a GUI. This as well can be configured during first boot. In first boot where we're able to select the type of authentication, at that point we can implement our LDAP scheme and be able to use directory information provided by LDAP from the very first time the system starts up. To test our client, we use a command called LDAP search, which will seek out the nearest uh, server uh, to be used for LDAP authentication. So thank you so much for joining us for this uh, uh, Linux, Red Hat Linux system administration course. We really do value your opinion and we want your feedback. So please select this link and take a short survey. Do you have any questions about this topic? If so, please use the question and comment box and thanks for joining us.